Hey, Lindsay, how are you? Hey, Aubrey, I'm doing great. I'm excited to be on video today. Yes, right. If you guys don't know, you can find this episode on YouTube as well if you want to see us as we're chatting. It's always fun. Yes, good stuff. What are we talking about today? This is really interesting. It's a follow up to a recent episode Lindsay and I recorded about arrogance versus confidence. And we kind of started talking about, you know, there are a lot of words that have a a negative connotation Mm -hmm. and that gender sort of plays a part. Sometimes we were mentioning how a man might be called outspoken and it's a positive thing, but maybe for a woman, it's not. Oh my gosh. And so we mentioned like, this would be a great separate episode. What are some of these words? And I kind of wanted to talk more about like some of the words that are a little bit derogatory and the better option that's often used for men that we should use for both genders. Oh my gosh. That we should use for both. Exactly. That is the key, right? Why are we in a way insulting women sometimes by using words that are not as nice when we're trying to say the same thing, right guys? Yeah. You guys are at the level you are ready for this, right? You're ready to up level your English and really connect, right? That is the key. If you use a word that is actually derogatory and you don't realize it, that will immediately break the connection. And we are here for connection, right? Exactly. That's such a good point that often you might use one of these words because you've heard someone else use them without even realizing there's this connotation. It might cause offense. So now with today's episode, you'll have a better idea of sort of the feelings that some of these words are evoking and what you could stay and say instead. Yeah, it's good stuff. So again, where can they go to go back and listen to that other episode where we got this idea? Yes, what was that yes. number? I was episode 1794. It was called okay. don't be complacent about adjectives with a negative connotation. That was a really okay. good one. So make sure and check it out if you didn't hear it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we talked about in that episode, the concept of being outspoken, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. And where do we start then? Let's talk about that one a little bit. Yeah. So this, I feel like if you call a man outspoken, Mm -hmm. it just, it has a pretty positive connotation. It just means he speaks his mind. Whereas potentially if you said this about a woman, you might be, you know, saying she's speaking her mind when she shouldn't. There's just this strange gender connotation that shouldn't be there. It's part of our culture, other cultures as well. I imagine just because we have, you know, a lot of fraught history when it comes to gender. Yeah. You know, and I, I'm sure that other cultures are potentially even more challenging than here in the U S for women, especially in the business world. Right. So, and this is also a great conversation starter for you guys, right. With native speakers, you could have this conversation. What is it like in the working world for women in modern times right now? 2022. Right. It is an interesting conversation. And like you said, Lindsay, you don't want to hurt that connection by creating awkwardness or, or something that's a little derogatory. So to be aware of this, because yeah, sometimes in English, there are different adjectives that mean the same thing really, Yes, but have a little bit of a different connotation. Yeah. So I can't wait to get into this today, guys. We're going to give you actual words, specific words, and let you know whether you should use them or whether you shouldn't. But first, Aubrey, We want to thank our listeners who have reviewed the show in Apple Podcasts or Spotify. I'm going to throw out some names of reviewers. You guys are going to become famous. (laughs) So thank you to Bijan, Saeed, Hossein, Mirhadi, Armin, Mariam, Bigley, Amireza, and Mohammed Panahi. Guys, thank you so much for your amazing reviews. Aubrey, the reviews are fantastic as usual. I know. I love reading the reviews and they are fantastic because it's a great podcast. But yes, guys, leave us a review. It's so fun. Yeah, guys. And make sure you hit follow on the podcast. We do try to read out names of people who have reviewed the show when we can. So you may get your name read out on the show out loud. Good yes. stuff. Awesome. Right. So let's dive into this, right? The, the whole idea is that some character traits, like we said, being outspoken or maybe being ambitious <laughs> are often ambitious. considered by society positive or attractive in men, but potentially negative in women. And I do feel like this is evolving some, thank goodness. It is evolving. Yeah. Yes. But this idea definitely still exists. And as we go over these words, I think you guys are going to start being like, ah, you're right. I see what you're saying. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, even ambitious. I hadn't thought about ambitious and it's not really on the list today, but true, right. That can, I think, especially for older generations, right. I think nowadays, If you say that a woman is ambitious and she's, you know, right now in 2022, it's usually a a good thing 
Do you, or what it do depends you on who you're talking to, right? I don't know mm-hmm. if my grandma would agree because like you said, the older generation, they often still feel a woman has a certain place. And if she's ambitious with her career, is she taking care of her kids? Like those ideas are still out there mm. and it's something we need to adjust. Like yes. in my opinion, we need to change. We need to, change. we need to update take. the weight. Absolutely. All right. Let's go through the list here for yeah, our listeners. So this is a list that was compiled by the European Institute for Gender Equality. Okay. You can find it online. We're not going over every adjective, but a few of these we're going to highlight and we'll share yep. the adjective that's commonly used for women. That's a little bit derogatory. And then the better language that means the same thing and is used more often for men and yes. potentially should be used instead for women as well. Absolutely. So the first one, can I go ahead and yes. let our listeners know what it is? Oh, well, there are two actually. So the first one guys, so bossy or pushy. Okay. Yes. And this, right. It means that you are telling someone what to do, yes. but both of those words, if someone called me pushy or bossy, yeah. both of them feel very derogatory. Like you clearly think it's a bad thing that I'm telling you what to do. Yeah. When I think of the word pushy, I think of a salesperson, like a, yes. a car salesperson, right? You're on the lot and they're just trying to push you in. You didn't come to buy a car. You just want to look and they don't let you look. They just try to rope you into a deal, right? Yes. That's also not... pretty annoying, pretty obnoxious. Right. right. Exactly. And it's not fair because what are we actually talking about? We're not talking about that. We're talking about something else, right? Exactly. The better word that's used more often for men is assertive. So if you're being assertive, you're letting someone know what to do. You're leading a team. This is so positive. Yes. It's really not different. You're bossing someone, you're telling someone what to do, but it's crazy how the connotation, there's nothing derogatory about the word assertive. Right. Exactly. And I would add to that, maybe assertive or a strong leader, right. Or things like that, just decisive. There are a few other words, right? Exactly. All Mm -hmm. of which are very positive that are framing someone as a very good leader rather than just someone who's being bossy. Exactly. So guys be careful, you know, Mm -hmm. also I would say, you know, think about this today. How can you challenge maybe even how can you challenge native speakers? If you hear them say, Oh, our female boss is, is pushy. You say, what do you mean by that? You know, what about this? I think she's actually pretty assertive. There you go. Right. right? To Uh reframe it and say, you know, she is quite assertive and then maybe share something that you admire or, you know, why you think that's a good thing. Ooh, that could be our call to action for our listeners today to challenge these stereotypes that lie in these words. Yes. Right. I Interesting. Agree. I love that. Okay. Let's do the next one. It's calling someone emotional or hormonal. <laughs> you could so hear bad. both of these, but only about a woman. Like people are not calling men these words. Oh my gosh. This is bad. This is, it is yeah, bad. this is really bad. So, um, the hormonal piece points to the idea that maybe a woman is on her menstrual cycle, right. And the hormones are flying very insulting. Very insulting, right? There are such better options. You could call someone passionate, enthusiastic, or empathetic. These also are things that sort of evoke emotions and feelings, but in a positive light, there's nothing derogatory about calling someone passionate. Yeah. Really interesting. And again, things are changing. Um, I think now, you know, emotional or empathetic is empathetic is definitely a skill that I think employers look for. Yes is an ability is a, a sense in a way that we, we have to, in the next century, we're going to need this to do business. Well, yes. right? And well, it's so. interesting because we talk about emotional intelligence, mm-hmm. but I feel like that's very separate from outright calling someone emotional Yeah, because totally. that implies that you can't control your emotions. You cry mm-hmm. a lot. Right. And it's right. such a different thing to talk about. Okay. Your emotional intelligence versus like, oh, she's yes. so emotional. Yeah, guys, that's, that's a great thing to write down right, right here today. That's a great bonus for you. There's a big difference between saying someone's emotional and someone has strong emotional intelligence, very different. Or I also just think, right. I would think so also just mood swings, getting angry all the time, not just crying a lot, but like, Oh, back and forth. That's what comes to mind when I hear the word emotional, moody moody. to Mm -hmm. call someone snapping. Yeah. Add that there. (laughs) Don't call someone moody. (laughs) (laughs) Definitely. I'm adding it. (laughs) I'm adding it to our notes guys. (laughs) Don't say it. Okay. Next one. This is good. Okay. What is it? What is yeah, it? So the word is ditzy. Oh I've, I've never heard a man called ditzy, but never. women for sure. Right. That's actually a great point. I've never heard that for a man Mm-mm. ever. It's really interesting. Right. And so 
this definitely implies um, lack of intelligence yeah. and being um, not serious, right? So mm-hmm. these are not positive things in the workplace. If you're calling no. someone ditzy, you, that's not someone you'd want to work with. It's someone who's not going to be a great part of the team. They mm-hmm. don't have the intelligence. They don't have the seriousness. Yes, for sure. And so the adjective for a man might be something like silly, right? Exactly, so right. Silly. If they're making a bunch of dad jokes, you're not right. going to call them ditzy, but you might call them silly. Mm, that's a good point. They could be saying the exact same jokes, right? Yes. But yeah, right? different things are being highlighted. So yeah, it's okay to call someone silly. If you're having a fun, lighthearted conversation, they tell lots of jokes. You'd be like, Ugh, you're so silly, right? right? You still want that person on your team. They still could be intelligent and serious. Yeah. They're just silly sometimes. Right. But Ditsy is definitely speaking to someone's intelligence. So avoid that guys. Just avoid that. Next one is good. Also never heard it referred to a man. So frumpy. Yes. Right. Frumpy kind of means, um, that you're, you're not dressed very smartly. Maybe Mm -hmm. you're wearing very baggy clothing that doesn't look really professional. Maybe some Maybe drab slumping, colors, like slumping, mm-hmm. rumpy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The clothes that don't fit well, as you said, colors like brown, black things that don't, don't, uh, what's the word? Like they don't have a punch. The clothing doesn't quite work. Right. right? Exactly. Mm-hmm. So this is interesting because what we're given as the alternative here is old fashioned, maybe mm. dowdy. I think that's used more in England, mm. but here's my hot take. <laughs> I tell my <laughs> children, I'm like, just don't comment on someone's physical appearance ever. Yeah. Like, you don't like what someone's wearing. Okay. You don't need to say anything like to ever use the word frumpy means you're commenting on what someone looks like, which I just don't think is ever necessary. Oh, you're teaching good lessons. I love it (laughs) because it's not about what we look like. Right. I mean, the amount of value that you can add to your company is not really about how, unless you're in a sales position and or making presentations or conferences, obviously there is a level where it matters, but that's a good point, right? Mm -hmm. If you have a salesperson who works under you, who you feel Mm -hmm. like doesn't dress professionally, this might be a conversation you would need to have with them. You wouldn't want to call them frumpy. You (laughs) could say, you know, potentially you're not dressing professionally. Right. I would love it if you could wear a smart suit, right? I love the adjective smart, smart, just meaning like more trendy, more fashionable. Yeah, that's good. Maybe we'll come back another day to business clothes in the workplace, you know, how to dress well for success. I love that topic, actually. That would be interesting. Um, for yeah. Sure. Okay. Okay. What's we the have next two one? more. Yeah. This one is all about vo- uh, your voice to call yeah. someone's voice shrill. Hmm. This adjective means very high pitched and annoying. And right. you just wouldn't ever usually call yeah. a man's voice shrill. This is usually used to refer to a woman who has a very high pitched voice, especially if right. she's complaining about something, Ugh, say her yeah. voice is shrill. It's not, yeah, kind. It, no, it really isn't kind. And so you might say about a man, high pitched or just a grating voice. That mm-hmm. word I don't know, Aubrey, what does that mean? Grating? It kind of means annoying, a sound that is annoying. Like okay. if your voice is grating, it means, oh, it's really bothering my ears for some. So if it is okay. high pitched and it's hurting your ears, mm-hmm. this still would be a better option to call it grating rather than shrill because shrill is first of all reserved just for women. So (laughs) there's that offense there and it's derogatory. Whereas anyone's voice can be grating. Yes. I love it. So guys, if you hear someone say that, call them out. So good. Mm -hmm. Do we have one more Aubrey? Yes. So this last one is hysterical to call Mm -hmm. someone hysterical Mm -hmm. is used much more for women than for men. This is a little more old fashioned. I don't hear it as much anymore. Yeah. But the much better alternative is irrational. If you Mm. don't like someone's ideas in an argument, sometimes you'll hear someone call the other and say, you're hysterical. Yeah. It would be much better to say, I feel like you're being irrational. Right. Right. And I also think just more to that end, men just aren't, I don't know if they're questioned as much by their coworkers, right? That idea. Oh, maybe that's a good idea. You know, maybe he knows something we don't know. Whereas if a woman, so I'm not saying always guys, not in not every situation, always, but sure. we know this happens, right? If a woman brings up that same idea, she might be called irrational or you're being crazy or off the wall or ridiculous, right? So be careful. This is a good opportunity to start a conversation and challenge people. Yes. And okay. I'm excited for this because our role play is doing just that. We're going to show you guys how to do this. If one coworker is venting about someone and using some of this language, that's a little derogatory. How can you reframe it, use different language and sort of show them what they could say instead and maybe spin it. Right. This will be good. I love it.
Okay. So let's get into it then, Aubrey. I'm excited. We're going to show our listeners how to truly connect, right? So everyone can feel accepted at work. Yes, exactly. So I'm venting about a colleague using some derogatory language and Lindsay, you're going to reframe it. Ready? (laughs) Okay. Here we go. Mary has been really bossy this week. Well, she's definitely assertive. I feel like she's also been emotional during meetings. Well, she is passionate for sure. I love that she inspires us to care though. Better than being apathetic. Well, she's really ditzy too, though. Always cracking jokes and not being serious when she should. It's true. She can be pretty silly. I think it keeps things light at work though. I appreciate it. I guess you're right. When you put it that way, she's actually pretty great. (laughs) I love this role play. (laughs) I called you out, but I also, I like that. I didn't, I didn't necessarily stop and say, Aubrey, you're being, you know, you're being sexist, right? You're being, you know, gender biased, right? Instead. Yeah. I just came back and the conversation going this way. Right. Where instead of feeling like embarrassed and shut down that I've uh, maybe accidentally used sexist language. Instead, I'm realizing I'm learning from you. I'm learning this better language and I'm realizing I'm wrong about this person. That's a good point. People can get very defensive and it it can also be toxic if you're just going around pointing fingers, right? You're sexist. Now that's not the way to keep that conversation going. That person's going to walk away. Instead, what I did was I just I used different words, right? And I kept the conversation going and I pointed out certain things you weren't noticing. Yes, exactly. Right. And I, I wouldn't find this, if I really were this person saying negative things about Mary, Yeah, I think the way you handled it was not awkward, right? right? You were able to reframe it with this better language and point out something positive. And I, I think I would feel a little bit chastised, but in such a good positive way that I think yeah. it would end really well. We'd still be on very good terms with no awkwardness. Yeah, for sure. And guys, if you're in a position of management or if you're a boss, it's your responsibility to set the tone of what is it, What is the environment like at work? Is it toxic right on your yeah. team? Is it respectful? Is it fun? So you have to be saying these things and, and reframing things this way. Okay. Yes, definitely. Let's quickly go through the role play. I first yeah. called her bossy and then mm-hmm. you used that better language to reframe it and say, well, she definitely is assertive. Right. Yes. And then, okay. Mm-hmm. And then you said, I feel like she's also been emotional during meetings. Right. And then I said, well, she is passionate for sure. So I really just changed that word. Yes. And then you brought up, you know, something good about being passionate. I love that she inspires us to care though, a lot better than being apathetic. Mm-hmm. I love that. Right. Instead of just sharing the other vocab you're, yes. you're actually sharing, like maybe she is emotional, but here's why I think that can be a good thing. Exactly. So really reframing and telling you to pay attention to something else, right? In a in a sense. And then you said she's really ditzy too. <laughs> You're really really coming like down. I'm on really there. digging in. <laughs> Got to use them all. <laughs> Always cracking jokes and not being serious when she should. And what did I say? Yeah. And you reframed it, saying, "Yeah, she can be pretty silly." And then again, something positive about that. I think it keeps it light at work, though. I appreciate it. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And then at the end, you were convinced. Yeah, I guess she is pretty great. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) I love that. So good. Oh, this is so good. Aubrey, such a good content episode for our listeners around connection at work. What's the takeaway? Yeah, guys, just to be aware that there are a lot of adjectives that have this derogatory meaning that you want to avoid. And instead there are better alternatives and you should know which ones to use so that you don't break that connection. Like Lindsay said, right. Unfortunately in society, these alternatives aren't always used. So practice this reframe it and help your coworkers to be better and be better. Exactly. At the very least, be careful what words you're using, but at the next level, or again, if you're a manager, a boss, setting a tone, being a leader, you need to call people out. You need to set that tone and let people know what's okay. And what's not at work. So good. Exactly. Good stuff. Awesome. This was a really fun episode. All right. Good stuff today, Aubrey. I will see you very soon on the next episode. Take care. See you later. Bye. Bye.